Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin. Ooh, this shit is kind of noisy. It's Kevin and Mikel. We are back with the new video. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just saying, don't fall. Oh, I'm not gonna fall. Oh, okay. Now. I'm already seated. How I'm gonna fall? I'm like, just gonna chill. That chair. No, it just you know can. Whatever. Mikel trying to start his stuff. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, sis. I don't want to have to help you out. <laughs> you better help me up. Just, shit, if I fall there's down. three things I don't do. Windows, toilets, and help people up. Oh God. I don't need nobody's talk. Well, I have to do my toilets. <laughs> anyway, what's going on, y'all? Make sure y'all start this video all by clicking the thumbs up button. Can we get at least like 3,500 likes? That means if you're on your iPad, your iPhone, your iPod, or your Android device, click the thumbs up button. I know some of y'all be watching us on TV now, yeah, like on y'all little um, Xbox or on your. Direct TV or whatever, you know, I know you can't hit the thumbs up button, but come to the computer, mm -hmm. click the thumbs up button. Thank y'all. The thumbs up button is what we The like button, right no, below the video. Looking at, so if you're looking at it, it's right below on your left hand side. Yep, right? on the bottom. Under right. here. Now if you're looking at me, then it would be below, you. below me. Right. For the first time, you're actually on top of something. Oh, ho, 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 ah, ha, 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 Flat. No, it ain't flat. flat. Uh-uh, show them. Don't suck it in. Look at it. It's, it's starting to it's the, the it's starting to form. Yeah, because I just got get like eating. it's starting to get like how I was. Ew! Ew! This is the Oh my god! What's my head so too? <laughs> oh, don't be looking at it. Let no, this video starting off the wrong way. And ladies and gentlemen, here we have <laughs> Beyonce surrogate. <laughs> Girl, cause we know she ain't having it. Child, please, you just had kids. Your mother can't have kids. My mom has four. I'm talking about your other mother. A, who? Janet. Janet, oh, Janet got some eggs frozen somewhere. Some she eggs frozen? She got a daughter out there. Ooh, mm -hmm. did I she ain't got no kids. Did everybody, I everybody, everybody, that is so old. Janet don't got no okay, kids. Okay, come on, let's start. Yeah, the motherfucking nerve. <laughs> Beyonce, Beyonce can't spell. That's why she ain't on Twitter. Beyonce can't spell. That's why she ain't on Twitter. Beyonce so can't anyway. spell. <laughs> and Jay can't read. <laughs> all right. So we gotta get this video all started off. Beyonce first things first. First things, first. first things first. I want to talk about basketball wives first. Oh my god. Because there are some people that I have to go in on. Oh Shout out to Shawnee O'Neal, and I want y'all to tweet her, tell her to watch this video, because I told her when we was at Tamar House, we're going to talk about the whole season. And she asked okay. how she find us. Okay. Even she knew. <laughs> We've been talking about basketball wives forever. I used to read y'all until I got up into that season on Netflix. So, yeah, the girls are back. You know, they didn't even start out in Miami. These girls are in New York City. I don't know what's going on in New York, but... You know, the girls start off in New York. We meet two new girls, Kenya and Keisha. Keisha. One of the girls got left at the altar, and one Keisha. of the girls trying to get out of the divorce. And that's, what's her name? Kenya. Ke well, Kenya. Kenya's trying to be a big time Grammy Award winning singer. I. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah. I'm going to let that go. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, these girls, these girls got to do something besides be a basketball wife. I guess. I, mean, like, I don't know. Can she even say? I don't know. I don't know. It's funny because she said she wanted to be a singer, but you didn't hear any. You just saw her different YouTube clips of her dancing. Child, everybody wants to be a singer or a dancer, just like every dude in Philly wants to be a rapper, just about. Um, but good luck to her on that. I didn't find the new girls interesting enough. Like, not yet. They don't have a lot going on. You know, we just getting to know these new girls. And Royce, you know, Royce seems to be cool with them. She's not talking to none of the other girls. And she needs somebody else to talk to besides Susie. Because Susie will have your shit everywhere. Susie is one of those girls you say, don't tell nobody, but. And then she's going to pick up the phone, and then everybody going to keep calling everybody, and everybody going to know your business. And then when you get back to Susie, say, why did you just. No, I, I, I didn't know that. that. When you said don't tell nobody, I thought you meant. 
Don't tell them. I didn't even don't tell them because that's what I told them. Mm -hmm. That's how I think her list is going because I didn't hear it that much in this new season. Oh, I heard it. I ain't hear when it. She said that what's her name look crazy or possessed. She looked possessed. She looked what? No. <laughs> I gotta get Ooh, on her yeah. too because. Excuse me, Yo, you girls are basketball wise. I'm pretty sure those girls know how to suck a dick, okay? They don't need you to be teaching them how to do that. Like, Susie, I'm not feeling Susie. Oh, is that what she was trying to teach them how to do? Yeah. Oh, I was like, wow. Some of the salt. Girl, I'm pretty sure they no, know how to. No, I didn't. Never mind. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I do. I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> So, so the girls getting to know each other. Jennifer, like, well, you know, uh, her and Evelyn, they not, you know, they still not cool like that. But Jennifer is like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I, I don't have no ill will to her. I'll still respect her if we still in the same room. You know, she, I think she still wants Evelyn's friendship. Evelyn just not here for it. But what's her name? Tammy. Tammy. Yeah. Oh, Tammy. Oh, yeah. Tammy, like, girl, you interviewing Instagram. everybody. Girl, yeah. anybody ask you to be Andy Cohen from? Yeah. That's we could watch Watch My Hand Live to yeah. find out what's going on. All you're doing is sitting there interviewing these girls, interrogating them, and then, oh well, she said this about you, Jennifer. She think that you boozy, and she think that you this, and blah yeah. blah 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 blah. I am not feeling that because you are too grown. And too damn old <laughs> to be doing this. This is stuff that girls do in high school. But do you like uh, Tiffany? Because Tiffany, she's a new girl, whatever. And then you gonna go back and tell Tiffany what she said if she didn't like. Oh, Jennifer, she said you was bougie, but girl, you know you really bougie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. No, this is what she told me. Cause I asked, why are you doing that, Tammy? Mind your business. You know what, Tammy don't have nobody to argue with. Mm -mm. So now she just got sitting there trying to trying to create trying drama. To create drama. You know. you know what I'm saying? Like, Tammy, please. Okay, now you and Evelyn are so cool now. You know, you can't tell her nothing. Her, I've yeah. never seen it for her and Evelyn. And then it's like, let me tell y'all the real deal. Tammy really don't give a fuck about Jennifer or Evelyn. No, she don't. Tammy is just there like, girl, let me get some shit started. Let me see how I can, how I can help these ratings out on this show. Let me see Let me see how I can keep myself on this show. Okay. Because they will, they will Eric Snow wife me in a minute. Ooh. Deshawn? <laughs> Whatever. What was her name? Deshawn? I don't know what her name was. <laughs> I don't know. Was she even on that show? No, no Deshawn. Oh <laughs> I thought she was on that show. No. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't she know what she show was, she was she ain't no damn drama. Yeah, I don't even know what show she was on. Bye, girl. Bye, girl. You got to go. So she's like, well, let me find out. Let me sit down and talk with Jennifer. Or let me sit down and talk with Evelyn. So, because everything else on the show didn't, really didn't matter. So, <laughs> Jennifer and Evelyn, they at the table. Shawnee is there for what? And <laughs> Tammy is there. I and know, did Shawnee even say anything? Child. No. She, she said there. something, but it, it was irrelevant. It Shorty didn't, it didn't do nothing to no, diffuse the situation. To save, I mean, not to, to, to show her face. Mm -hmm. Just to show her face. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they sitting there. Was, I think, was, uh... I don't think that. It was, I know somebody else there. Was it Susie? I don't know. It was somebody. Somebody else is there. Because Royce wasn't there. Yeah. No, Keisha. Oh, I think it was. No, I don't mm -hmm. know who no, it was. It might have been Royce. It might have been Royce, Tammy, and uh, Evan, whatever. Susie was sitting there too. Because I remember Susie, the camera was cutting on Susie and uh, Tammy when. Oh, you when know Evelyn Susie going to tell Royce about what happened. Oh, I know that's probably going to happen next week. Mm -hmm. So these girls going at it. Jennifer clearly still wants to be Evelyn's friend. Evelyn is not here for it. But that's my thing, Jennifer. You cannot have people write blogs for you and you not read what's going on before it's posted. That was dead wrong. Dead, dead, dead wrong because you don't ever want no one writing for you and then you not mean what said. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, she told you that it was a ghostwriter that did the damn thing. So you still mad and you're still going off and you're yelling, cursing out Jennifer. And then when Jennifer gives you what you give, oh, you better keep it down, bitch. You better tone it down. I'll knock you the fuck out, bitch, and all of that. But my thing is, 
Get respect if you want respect. You can't be treating people like dogs, and if it, you know, you can't treat people like dogs and then expect them to treat you like a cat and pet you and shit. Because if you treat me like a dog, I'm gonna treat you back like a dog. And Jennifer, girl, I'm gonna need you to start standing up for yourself a little bit more. I can't have you sitting there letting these people dog you out. I'm gonna need you to, you know, get tough with them. Yeah, but Evelyn, I'm gonna need Evelyn to grow up. I, you know what it is. I, I don't, I don't. The reason why I think Evelyn was still angry with Jennifer, not saying that I'm defending Evelyn, but I think she was still angry with Jennifer because she didn't believe Jennifer. She didn't believe the whole ghostwriting thing because she probably felt as though, why the hell you got somebody ghostwriting for you and you don't check it? She probably felt as though either Jennifer wrote it herself or she did have somebody ghostwrite it and she did check it. That's what I think Evelyn's whole. The reason why she was upset because I think if she did believe Jennifer what Jennifer was saying that she wouldn't have been as upset mm -hmm. but I don't think she believed Jennifer that's why I think she was still going in on but her. you know what and, and another thing no matter what Evelyn and Jennifer is going through I, I, I didn't even read the blog I don't even think nobody gave a fuck about the blog I didn't even know Jennifer had a blog okay nobody I didn't hear nobody talking about that blog not at all and you know you know whatever problem you and Jennifer have you don't need Shawnee, you don't need Tammy, and you don't need Susie. You don't need them there. What y'all need to do is sit there and talk it the fuck out like grown-ass women. Me and my friends, we in our late 20s. Whenever we have problems with each other, we sit down and talk and discuss it. Even if we got to yell at each other, don't look at me like that bitch because I see you. I see you, I see you, I see you. Yeah, late 20s. Late 20s. Child, how late is late, late, late 20s. Late as in late, almost touching 30? <laughs> or no, I'm not early really 30s, yet. but you I'm still want to be late I'm like in a midpoint between 30. Oh, okay. I'm like in the middle between 25 oh, and 30. in the middle. You know, we talking out like grown men. Ain't going to be no fist throwing, bottle slaying. Who? Like, I... I <laughs> <laughs> there comes a point to when you grow up and not fight it out for some damn ratings. Like, but I think that's probably how Evelyn is, cause you know how that's how them Puerto Rican women get when they get mad. Like they they go there. But Evelyn, that's not cute, not mama. All Puerto Rican girls but not that. all. But you know, you know they're gonna say, oh, "Why you stereotype us?" Come on now, them island women. You know how to get down. But no, I don't. I've never messed with an island woman. Oh, before. girl. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I just, I'm gonna just need her to come on. You mean those like, project women? Cause Evelyn's from the projects. Shit, and I know plenty of girls from the projects. And she's from the New York projects, project too. too. Okay, okay. I'm mother's still in the projects. Okay. And child, she. You know okay. what? Don't even. Now you know what? I'm not gonna go there. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I shouldn't have said that. But she still lives in the projects. She was yeah. on the damn show. Okay, I'm sure they're living a flat, fabulous life, girl. Yeah, playing your mother's over there, there on, on the eighth floor of the project. In an apartment, three <laughs> days, okay? <laughs> now you wind up on the eighth floor in three days. Okay. Evelyn, girl, if I could have a heart to heart with you, I'm going to give you a chance. But I can tell this season I'm going to be going in on you a lot. And you know, with these reality shows, it should be business ventures coming on. <laughs> And well, it's for see, Jennifer because she got that little lip gloss thing. Going. Yeah, she got the Lucid Cosmetics. Yeah, and she got Flirty Girl Fitness. And, she's and the Evelyn owner has a, a business venture coming out because she's writing a book. Mm -hmm. or she, I think when she's already read written it. I'm not reading it. But well, well, no, I'm not reading that trash. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, Evelyn doesn't have. I mean, I follow Evelyn on Twitter. I personally, if Evelyn wasn't on the show, I wouldn't watch the show because every show needs that one person that's going be the center of drama and Evelyn is the center of drama and you know it's as set bad as it sounds mm -hmm. yes I do watch because you know Evelyn is on there but that does not mean that I'm gonna read a book that she writes no because truth be told there's nothing that Evelyn has to say that I really want to hear about you know I don't really want to hear about that the only reason why I started following Evelyn on Twitter was because she started posting these different pictures of her and these hot shoes that she used to wear. And I was like, oh, wow, those shoes really look nice. Like, and so I was like, okay, I'll follow Did you. Did any of you girls go to Dolce when y'all go to Miami? Or is it Dolce? Is it Dolce or Dolce? I don't know. I don't do y'all go? I don't know. Are you interested? Like, I, I would want to see her do more stuff than Basketball Wives, but the way she's acting on TV, I think that might hurt her. Yeah, because I know. You know, because Nene don't, Nene don't go there, go there like that. No more. 
No, she don't. I never no seen more. Nene fist front hit nobody. Well, no, 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 no. But Nene and her attitude. Oh yeah. With that attitude, you don't have to fist fight nobody. You know she that whole attitude. She, when she started getting the Donald Trump check, okay. she said, "Let me calm this attitude okay. down." Okay. Somebody got to her in her ear. Yeah, Donald Trump. <laughs> He sent everybody out their way out that boardroom and told her to stack. Okay. Okay. Somebody said something. But I definitely will be watching next week. Now, can we talk about the nasty trashiness that the National Enquirer did this week? They posted Whitney Houston in a casket. But the main thing I want to know is what dirty, rotten, evil motherfucker that works for that funeral home or is a family member of the Houston family well, is a member of Whitney Houston's family that took that photo. I think that's very disrespectful. And, you know, the family gave the public what they wanted. You know, we couldn't get a public service, but we did get to watch it on TV. And to go there and take that picture and post it, I mean, for the Enquirer to post that picture and, and for everyone to see, I just think it's heartless and, and, and classless. I honestly don't think that, my, me and my coworker were talking about this, I honestly in my heart don't believe that it was a family member. I do believe that it may have been somebody who actually worked, worked at the funeral. Because I think that the family members tried so hard to keep Whitney protected even in death. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they tried so hard. that I, I doubt that it was a close family member who did that. I do believe that it may have been, because when the picture was taken, especially the shot that's from far back, there's nobody in the room. You know what I mean? Like, there's nobody in there. I, I just think that, hell, it may have even been a security guard who may have been in there supposed to be watching that body. Because I just don't see how somebody was allowed to get that close to her body and do something like that. Just, you see, it's, I just, it's so horrible. Like, all for money, because you know they got paid for that. Oh, yeah. They, you know, they probably got paid a lot of money. But, you know, I, I was saying to myself, the National Enquirer, they should be ashamed of themselves. You know, there, has, there comes a time where you have to say, okay, now this is taking it too far. A little too far and we're going to respect the family's wishes. But then I remind, I was reminded that the National Enquirer blew up years ago because it was them who posted the picture of Elvis Presley in his casket in 1977. And that's how they got went their claim to fame by posting that picture. So this, this is what they do. You, you see what I'm saying? This is what they do. Mm -hmm. Had They had a picture of Michael Jackson in his casket, they did the same damn thing. You know, they had a picture of uh, Aaliyah in her casket or Aaliyah's burnt body in that plane. Did we even David see Michael in his casket? No, no. The, it was a closed casket. But we did see his dead body on, that, sh on yeah. that stretcher in the hospital mm -hmm. when he was naked and he just had that cloth around his penis. We did see that, which I thought was horrible. Because I don't know who released that picture. But didn't they, didn't they do that on the trial, right? But, they, but if they did that on the trial, but it was on the news when I saw it. I, it was on the news when I saw it. So I I'm think they released it like when it was on trial, they show his dead body. Yeah, well, that's in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Of course, when they're doing the trial, you know, they probably have to. But you know, we don't need to see that. The public does not need to see Michael Jackson's dead body on, on the table in the hospital. We're not in that courtroom. We don't need to see stuff like that. You know, I, I could have went without seeing Michael Jackson's dead body on that thing. Mm -hmm. I really could have. Like, certain things you just don't need to see, and that's one of them. She did look beautiful, but she, I just... She, yeah, she looked like she was asleep. It mm -hmm. looked like she was dead she at all. Like she was right at peace. Like somebody... Yeah. But yeah. It's, just a, it's just a shame that they, you know, they went that far. And I hope nobody don't buy the newspaper. Well, you know, it's going to... You know, they're going to buy it anyway. It's right there on the newsstand. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were talking about this today at work that, you know, the family... Because the newspapers come out... I think that paper comes out, what, next week or something it's like that? It's not already. No, I was told that it came out next I week. I think I just seen a picture of it on a newsstand. What? Oh, well, if you did, If it do come out next week, I was you know. told that it came out next week. But, oh. but then they were saying something about the the family may sue them for doing it. But I said to myself, would it really matter now? Because they're, they're going to find out. They're going to they're get the person that did it. They could, they could find out. If, if more people step up to try they to do something. You know why they're not going to do it? Because the National Enquirer is not going to tell them who gave them that picture. Because if they, because I'm sure the National Enquirer and the person who gave them that picture probably have some type of little deal that you can't tell that I gave you this picture, whatever the case may be, or you know some type of deal that they can't reveal. Because I'm sure if the National Enquirer tells who did that, then they probably gonna want their money back from that person. You know that person ain't gonna give them their money back. Mm -hmm. So I doubt if the National Enquirer is gonna actually. Well, if I'll anything, take they'll probably take it off. They're the gonna sue the funeral home. They're gonna do something. 
Well, they can't take the picture off the streets because the shit. Is but that's why I said. But that's why I said. Would it really matter if the family sued? Because it's like the picture, whether or not the newspaper sells the paper, the picture's already out there. You see what I'm saying? Everybody doesn't see the picture now, so it's like, would it really matter if they sued or not? Mm -hmm. It would be making a statement, yes. But I mean, I can see if they were suing. Knowing that that picture was gonna be there and the public hasn't seen it yet, so now then they're stopping the public from seeing it. But we've already seen it. Well, I think they need to, they need to take actions against that funeral home because somebody take actions taking, against somebody and, yeah. and find out who did. If they got cameras in there, yeah, or if they could take lie detector, had the employees take a lie detector test because that's not cool to do that's that. Not. I think I really think the Houston family should step it up. Like, bitch, we ain't playing. We coming to get you. I really hope they do. Um. Chris Brown and Rihanna, they came out with their duets, Turn Up the Music remix and Birthday Cake remix. Mikel did not get a chance to talk about it. So, what oh, do you, you think about, about it? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear Turn Up the Music, but I did hear Cake. I mean, I heard Cake, like, I didn't listen to the whole thing. But, I mean, I it was good to me. I was... It's damn good to me, too. Yeah, though. I didn't hear anybody say anything bad about either one of the songs, so I'm assuming that Turn Up the Music is good, too. Did you hear mm -hmm. that one? And then, I, and then at the end, she Turn says, Up the Music is... You. On is Christmas song, right? Yeah. And the cake is Rihanna song. This is the million dollar question that I would love to know. Okay? The hell with cake and turn up the music. The million dollar question that I want to know is what did Chris Brown's girlfriend think or say when he told her that he was going to make this song with her? Look, KY and Jelly is just here for the ride. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you. I don't know how to say her name. Well, they've been together for a no. long time. They've been together for like a year now. They've been together well, for look, a long time. She better trust her. I mean, I don't know what to say about it, but I... Uh, I don't think I don't think Chris Brown and Rihanna are doing anything, but I just think that's a little awkward, you know, when you are dating somebody who, who was in this nasty public relationship with this with his ex you know mm -hmm. it ended real nasty and publicly and everybody knows about it and then they get turned around three years later and do a song together and it's like you know uh, you know it's like, i don't know i mean that's like the, that's the real elephant in the room look let me <laughs> tell you everybody i i just feel i don't feel bad for her when you said she said i love you on the end yeah. of the song mm -hmm. rihanna said that on which song turn up the music wow Okay, bye, girl. <laughs> Let me just tell y'all, I think that probably within the next two years, we will see Rihanna and Chris Brown back together. Probably. Like, this might Prob happen. And let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What? Because you know you and I have been saying on this show that we, everybody needs to just, if Chris and Rihanna have, if Rihanna's forgiven Chris, then we need to just. Yeah, that has nothing to do with us. It we just. People just mad because they're in the public yeah. eye and they're getting her money. Yeah. Well, what money. do you think is going to happen if they do decide to get back together? Well, how do you think the public is going to react? Because surprisingly, the public has not really been that negative towards the two of them. Ooh, with some, some, a lot of people unfollow Rihanna. Um, some people are mad. Um, somebody even made a YouTube name. I hate the Scorpion and and went, went to my YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, and said all kinds of stuff. Like some people are mad about Wait, it. Wait, what did they say? Oh, um, you uh, um, I can't believe you support this woman beater. He's forever a woman beater. Blah 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 blah. You know how the girls going off. Yeah. And I and I keep saying this. You can't judge somebody based on that one thing that we all know about. People change. You can't be one thing forever. Um, people gonna call Rihanna dumb. People gonna call her all kinds of names. Um, people not gonna look to her as a role model anymore. And uh, she doesn't want to be a role model. But you know that's the role that she soon would have to accept because she has many people liking her no matter how much she rebels, which I love. You know it, it just is what it is. But I don't think I don't know if it's gonna hurt her record sales or anything. People think it will. I don't think I don't so. Know. I don't think so. I just think that it's bound for them to get back to happen. What happened between them is something was something normal, them fighting, but this time Chris Brown took it too fucking far. And because the media is in it, they can't be back together. But if there was no such thing as media for Rihanna or Chris Brown, or if they was a regular couple, they would still be together. You know what I, th I honestly think that had, because you know it was just the two of them in that car. Mm -hmm. I honestly do believe that had he not beat her 
Well, had he beat her up like that and not kicked her ass out that car, mm -hmm. then we probably, to this day, probably would never know about it. Because mm -hmm. then they both would have drove home and she probably would have stayed indoors for days until her face healed and probably called over probably her closest friends that she knew wasn't going to tell nobody to help her recover. And mm -hmm. then we probably would never know. Probably. But we probably would have never known. But, but, but... Being as though he beat her ass like he did, and she got out of that car, and he drove off, leaving her by herself. That's what happened. Because, you know, she was we all know that she was stranded by herself to the point where she had to yell for help for somebody to call <laughs> help for her. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Had that not happened, had she not got out of that car, we probably to this day would have never known that that happened. Because he probably would have drove home, the two of them probably would have drove home and kept fighting. <laughs> okay. okay. I continue. And kept fighting. <laughs> Can I just say that that... Parody, I don't think it's Sunny. What parody? They have a new parody on World Star Hip Hop. It's you seen what's love got to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the scene and what's love got to do with it where Ike rapes Tina in the studio mm -hmm. in their house. Remember when she was singing and she and but mm -hmm. he was high when he raped her? Well it's a, it's a parody where supposedly Tina's supposed to be Rihanna doing cake. Just like that Sierra American Idol parody, like that. It's <laughs> like that. But it, to me I didn't think it was funny. I watched it today and I was just like, I don't think this is funny. Cause the guy who was doing the voices, he, he it just he just wasn't convincing to me. It just didn't seem funny. Maybe he should have had somebody else do. do. I don't know. It just wasn't funny. So Adele, you know, uh, oh god, <laughs> people are mad because she put up the middle finger, and they like, and they here they go, here they go, here they go. Oh, you know, it's a black and white thing. Oh, but Adele can put her middle finger up on TV and not nothing happen. But M.I.A. put her middle finger up on TV and everybody goes crazy. Everybody is mad at Madonna. Everybody got to apologize. Wait, wait. M.I.A. M. I. is black? She ain't black. She look Arabian to me. But oh, you know, I thought you said it was a black and white. That was you know, she know, she know. Um, well, we don't got that tent to our screen, so. Yeah, well, anything that ain't, I guess anything that ain't <laughs> if white. If it ain't white. That is <laughs> <laughs> true. I say, if it ain't white, it ain't right. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Hey, well. Mm, and I heard my sister's black. We had to go back. But, um, yeah, so she put her middle finger up. Let me tell you something. I really don't give two shits about it. But I will say that, Adele, you are now, like, the biggest thing <laughs> since... Slice braid and butter. Slice. Since, girl, dare I say it, girl, I don't even know. But you are the biggest thing since the biggest thing, Whitney. And... No, no, no. No, no, no I didn't want to say that. Yeah, but say but she, the only person I could compare her to, like, when like when everybody was captivated by her and was cheering her on, is when I seen Whitney and... The Grammys and everybody stood up and gave her that statement. Oh, like they. No, I think you took it too. I think you took it too far back. I think but Adele who, is the who? biggest thing since. Lauryn Hill. Well, I think Adele is the biggest thing since the most recent biggest thing, which was Who's whatever artist recently? who came out a few years ago and Lady Gaga. Gaga. Maybe Lady Gaga. But see, I, I can expect Lady Gaga to put her middle finger up. I can't no, no, expect. No, no, I don't mean with the expense. No. I mean as far as biggest thing is concerned. I don't mean. It's yeah, but and that girl is selling, girl. I gotta say congratulations. Seven hundred forty thousand copies sold of twenty one last week. And that's After usually what somebody's price. first week sales when they first come. Okay. Out. okay. And this is a whole and, year later. And y'all saying people can't sell? Adele is making that money. Let me tell you, it's just that people just not into you. And I think I'm gonna start saying that. What? Are, what? What are you? What? What can Adele come out with next? Do you think? Because Let Adele is really riding high off of 21. Todrick Hall tried me yesterday and I got him, got him back yesterday because he just kept saying, oh, well, Adele is this and that. This is my thing. Adele makes great music, mm -hmm. but I'm tired of that breakup shit. That's all I'm using about. He did this and he did that and I'm over this and I'm over it. Girl, give me something else. Give me some, sing about dick that make you happy. Sing about something else. Like, it's just sad, break up, soul music. Anybody can relate to that. I want, I want to hear something different from Dell. I'm not saying um, go pop. I just want you to change up what you're singing about. Because it's all sounding the same. You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny that you said that about going pop? Because I was reading this thing with Whitney Houston. And back in the late 80s, Whitney Houston got booed at the Soul Train Awards. Because they said she was too white. She was too, yeah, she was going a little bit too popish. Mm -hmm. And Whitney Houston did an interview shortly after that where she said that if you want to make it far in this business, you have to eventually 
cross over to pop. To That's the where the end. money is. She was absolutely, she's absolutely right. Because we've seen as the years went on, different artists come out in one genre of music mm -hmm. and by the middle of their career, they switch over and they gain a whole new fan base and they get even bigger because but see, you know what? I've never like like Janet Jackson. I've never looked at her as an R&B star. I've always looked at her as a pop star. She's a black girl, but she make the pop music. That's funny because I don't think I've ever looked at her as an R&B star either. Maybe because when I think of R&B singers, I think of a singer. Singer. Yeah. Not throwing shade at Janet, but I'm just saying, like, if I had to choose, I would say pop because Janet is that entertainer, that pop star, that mm -hmm. star that you look to that's going to rock the stage. R&B, you're going to look to somebody like Lauren Hill, somebody like a Brandy or a Monica, like, or maybe even an Adele, even though, you know. But those are the type of singers that you look to. Janet, I'm putting her in the category as pop, not R&B. So, Mind you, she got 15 number one R&B hits, but who, I, Janet? Janet, but I, she not. Well, it's funny because they nominate Rihanna in R&B categories, yeah. too. You're like, <laughs> bitch, what? Is, what? Are y'all talking about the same R&B that I'm talking about? But I guess. Yeah. So look, Adele putting up that middle finger, I just think that, you know, she could have been more professional, even though they cut her time off. I don't think she should put the middle finger up, but no. who really cares? Who really cares? Who's not gonna buy Adele's next album? It's funny because I didn't about her next album. When they showed it on the view, I didn't even see her. <laughs> it seemed like her finger was off the camera when she did it. Mm -hmm. But, but I would have got it. They need to Truth be told, these people need to start making rules where these people have a little bit more leeway time when they win and stuff. Come on, these, mm -hmm. you know, these 20 second time it's not, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not even going to hurt the network yeah. to run over time because the news is coming on. So what? <laughs> the news? Well, people want to watch the news. They want to hear what's going on so the nation sure. know. If somebody, if there's a rapist in your neighborhood, that's what the news is Let me tell you know. something. Let me tell you. How you, you how you want to know? Excuse me. Look. Excuse me. How are you going to no. know? You got a rapist. Let me tell you. This is what I hate about the news. Adele I don't know. Let me tell you. We're going to find out after Adele finishes. No. You know what's going to no. happen? Because when the Grammys go off, guess what I do? I get in the shower and I take my ass to bed mm -hmm. because I'm tired. Now, the Grammys would stay on schedule like they're supposed to be. They never stay on schedule. Well, then, you know what? Then some, something's got to be. The Oscars not going to be on schedule. No, they're, they're not. They're them to play. I was watching Oscar speeches early in the morning this morning. I did them to play the horn on uh, Viola Davis or anybody else. Like, I don't. When, when it's best supporting or best actor well, or actress, well, I don't think you should do that. The best actor and actress categories get a little. Best well, actress, to, best yeah. actor, best director, best picture. Those particular categories get a little bit more time than the other people. Yeah, because Cuba had to go through that thing. Yeah. Oh my God! But it was so. It was just like it made me want to cry. When I be saying. When I be seeing my people win um, Oscars and stuff, it's kind of like, it's kind of like heart wrenching. Like it's great. We got another one, y'all. Yes, that's how I be feeling. We dude. got another one, y'all. So um, <laughs> it may have took us a few years, but we finally got it. So we all know the Oscars are this Sunday. I'm excited. I'll be watching. I don't think I'm. I don't know if I'll be on Black TV, but I'm definitely gonna be watching. Um, I, I really think that Octavia Spencer has this in the bag. She does. The Oscar, like, no doubt in my mind. Um, I am really scared. Not scared, but I think Meryl Streep might win this Oscar, y'all. Because it's been 30 years, 29 years to be exact, since she's won an Oscar. So, and it's 10 years since a black woman won an Oscar. So you like, well, who do you vote for? Like, I don't know. But I just, the, the right person will win. But I do have I a hunch that Meryl Streep is going to I know you want Meryl Streep to win. I saw, I saw The Help mm -hmm. and I saw The Iron Lady. Mm -hmm. Both movies were really good. But Meryl Streep and The Iron Lady, she, it, for anybody who saw The Iron Lady, she not only became Margaret Thatcher, but she became an 85-year-old woman. To the point that you forgot that you were even watching Meryl Streep. The whole mannerisms, the whole talking, the whole, just her whole being, she became an 85-year-old woman. I was just like, oh my God, if she does not win an Oscar for this performance, then... I think that the Oscars is given, you know, Viola an Oscar. I just know, the whole affirmative action. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that Viola wasn't good, but I don't think she was good enough to beat Meryl. I'm they just saying. Mean. And I, you know, I had to let Mike from Atlanta know.
Because Mike was on Twitter one day, yeah, being there, he was on Twitter one day saying that, oh, Viola should win and Meryl shouldn't win. I said, wait, did you see the Iron Lady? No, but then you don't need to talk until you see it. Okay? Because when you see it, you'll definitely see why Meryl should win. Now, Iron Lady may start it off a little slow, but I ain't talking about the movie. I'm talking about the character that Meryl played. Ciao. All I know is I cannot stop watching The Help. Like, that is my movie. I, I, I could watch it all day. That is my movie. And every time I watch it, I see something different that I didn't pay attention to the first time. But, um... You know what? Like, I'm not going to say this because it's going to start a whole different yeah. argument. But I thought this was kind of... I felt like this was kind of true when I first saw The Help, but I didn't want to say it out loud. But somebody said to me... I'm not going to say who told me. But somebody said to me one day that... The help to them, as good as a, as good as the movie was, the help to them wasn't a movie that wasn't as like the whole theme of the story wasn't as big as people were making it out to be. Because they said when you really stop and think about it, the movie, the whole climax of the movie was the book and trying to figure out what it was, the big secret about the whole thing. And then when you find out that it was shit in the pie, you go, oh, like. And I said, well, you know, that's kind of true because you in the help I was waiting for something like I was waiting for somebody to get beat up or somebody to get killed or something like that but then as I was watching I was like damn like what's the big climax and it was the the revelation that many had shit in that pie or whatever it was and I'm thinking like well damn they could have added something a little bit more climactic than that because no I, I I I got more from that movie than just shit in the pie no 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 I got more from the movie too but I'm saying the big climax of the movie was the whole shit in the pie because the movie told a really really good story it told a story about how how African Americans back in that day how they were treated when they worked for certain white folks but the climax of the story was the whole trying to figure out what was the big secret that everybody knew but wasn't nobody saying it. And that was the whole shit in the pie. That, that, that wasn't the climax to well, me. What was the climax? The climax to me was them seeing that book get published. And you know, I wanted And to, what was in the book? What? The same thing. The shit in the pie. But, but, but listen. To me, like, to me, like, that part. When she said, eat my shit, like, I knew. Yeah, okay. we, we all knew that. Yeah, but she didn't but, know. So we had to wait. We had to watch this whole movie just for this woman to figure out that she was eating shit. But, but she already knew that. No, she didn't know. She didn't realize it until... She didn't realize it right then and there that she had did it. No, when the mom... Well, no, no, no. The, yeah, the when, mom the mom, was, when the mom went off. But then we had to wait no. until she read the book. Because remember when the mom went off and was like, Ooh, you eating shit? Because I guess the mom caught on first before she caught on. Mm -hmm. But then we had to wait for her to read this book because it was just like, okay... Like, it should have been. Weird. I thought she went off because she put the fucking book. She put the story right. She already knew she ate shit, though, Mikael. Well, but yeah, but before she, she ever right, she did. She, did. she, she did. already knew that. But then we had to wait for the book to come out for then her to read that it was put in the book. No, let me like, tell you what I got from the movie. You got the maid, you, we got to see how maids were treated down south and how it was for them. We've never got a chance to hear from a maid standpoint of what it is to be a maid down there. So we got to see their struggle. The maid struggle, we got to see Skeeter struggle with her mom saying, no, I don't want you to be a writer. I want you to get a man and I want you to have kids because you're getting old. And then you have these women. You got these um, women that, you know, they have nothing else to do besides play bridge or do whatever else they do and dislike black women. And, you know, they just, the husbands really just treated the women like shit. You know, they didn't even speak to the maids, make me a sandwich and do this and go get the baby. Like, it was a whole lot going on in the movie. I just found it. You know what? But you know what? I also, when I first saw The Help, what it reminded me of? What? That the reason why I didn't get too hype over The Help, you know how I'm a big movie buff. There's a movie called The Long Walk Home with Whoopi Goldberg. And to me, those two stories are somewhat similar to each other. Whoopi Goldberg played a maid in this movie in the late 1950s where it was around the whole time of the boycott situation in Alabama and she and a group of maids got together and they stopped catching a bus to work and things like that and the woman played by Sissy Spacek who also played in The Help, mm -hmm. Sissy Spacek was her boss and Sissy Spacek was real sympathetic to the African American cause but her husband, he was a part of the Ku Klux Klan and he wasn't too whistling. To me, it kind of The Help kind of reminded me of that mm -hmm. even though The Help 
told the story from a maid's standpoint. standpoint and the long walk home was just talking about but they still kind of if you watch the long walk home it's somewhat similar to each other mm -hmm. it, it kind of is and i think the long walk home to me told a much better and broader story and the and that's why when i first saw the help the first thing i said to myself is this is kind of reminded me of a long walk home just like when i watched dangerous minds last the other night i said wow dangerous minds is like a non-singing version of sister act two Mm. With Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. It's like I, a non singing version of Sister Act 2. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> I was watching it laying across my bed and I said, these characters, I've seen these characters before. Sister Act 2, except they're not singing. No, but see, it's <laughs> a movie that I thought, uh, what's that movie called? It's a movie with Hilary Swank. Freedom Writers? No, it's not, it's probably not Hilary Swank. Freedom Writers, I thought Freedom, Freedom Writers. Writers was just. Like Dangerous Minds. I never watched the movie, but Freedom Riders, I've heard of that, but what is that about? Um, like I guess I, I don't know what the movie was about, but I knew I wanted to see it, but it reminded me of Dangerous Minds. Okay. Now, I just want to say, I'm not taking anything away from the help because I think that the acting was really good in the movie. I thought the movie overall was a good movie. Many I'm was saying, the movie. Yeah, many was the movie. I just think that the help, to me, could have it could have been a little bit more than exactly what it was. And that's why when I first saw The Help, it just kind of reminded me of A Long Walk Home. Because I said, well, damn, I've kind of seen this story before. I mean, they're, the both movies are not exactly the same, but there's some similarities to them. And if anybody has seen The Long, long Walk Home, we go over it, maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen it, then y'all should see it. And I don't see how any of y'all ain't see it, because it's an old movie, it's a real good movie. That's when Whoopi Goldberg was like, yeah. Yeah, she <laughs> Whoopi's been Whoopi, a long time. Let me tell you, Whoopi, yeah. if, if <laughs> Meryl Streep can keep getting these damn roles, you can do the same thing. you probably just comfortable sitting on TV for an hour a day. It's no it's no way nobody not thinking of her for movies. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. It, she it probably could don't be wanna, true. No, that could she be probably true. don't want to do movies no more. Or they're probably not sending her the roles that she's comfortable with doing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I think once Whoopi good. Whoopi is at a point now that she no longer has to go looking for work. The work comes I'm to her. Me. And she may read the stuff and be like, well, I'm not interested in that. They're not sending me good stuff. So therefore, I don't want to do nothing. That's just like Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington comes out with a movie every two or three, three or four years. Like, he comes out with a good movie, it blows up, and then you don't see from him for another three. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Denzel is at that point, too, where he's like, Need to go looking for work. Come to me. If it's good, I'm gonna take it. If not, I ain't gonna take it. I thought Safe House was really good. Did you see it? No, uh, yeah. You should go see it. It's a really good movie. See, I keep hearing yeah, it's good. Then I hear some of you, uh, yeah, it's good. I gotta see it. I thought it was. I thought it was good. It made me cry. You cry every day. I do. I do. But I'm just saying, it made me cry. Did it help make you cry? Well, you ain't cry when uh. I'm trying to think. Did it? <laughs> When May Mobley was like, no, oh, no. that was the only part of the movie that made me cry. <laughs> was at the end when Viola Davis got fired. Oh, that part <laughs> made me cry because that wasn't. I thought that was so unfair. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so you. unfair that they that that, that girl that girl played that role so well. That little girl, I don't, yeah, no, she did. Not even the little girl, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. I don't like. Her. Oh yeah, I'm like, bitch, I don't like you because you did. played that too good. Like you don't like black people. Now, I'm not here for that. That's when you know an actress is good at what they do. An actor or an actress. Yeah, I was about to when say, they make you not about. when they make you not like them. Or the like I said with the Iron Lady with Meryl Streep, when you when they make you forget mm -hmm. who the hell it is you're watching. Okay, because you couldn't tell me I wasn't watching Meryl Thatcher. Martin Thatcher. <laughs> Martin Thatcher. <laughs> I was like, what, what are you doing? I haven't seen that. Yeah, it was really good. It's like I'm gonna tell you. I'm surprised not on DVD on. yet. It starts off. This really is probably play at the Ritz. Probably only at the Ritz or something. Um, so we're going to close this video. Are we done already? Yes, girl. It's only, it's a good video. No, I mean, the topic. Yeah, we went through, let's see, witness casket for a basketball wife. That's what I said. I said we're going to close this video. Oh. Bitch, you ain't not being finished. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got to get my little mediation room on, like whoopee. <laughs> Moderate. Oh wait, did you see Star Jones on the bed? That was nothing but shade for the whole 30 minutes she was on there. Well, you know, Star really didn't want to talk about what no, happened. and I went not either. Like, come on, Barbara, look. Everybody knows what happened. Y'all said it. Y'all didn't see it for me no more. And I said, I'm going, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it before y'all say it. And then, you know, 
she didn't want to talk about her weight, how she lost her weight. Cause a lot of people are ashamed sometimes of what they do and not are not proud to say, you know, I got gastric bypass. She didn't want to say it at the time. But then again, what lies the star Jones hold for y'all? As like as a cast, you don't go around telling nobody secrets. Mm -hmm. If I ask you not to say nothing, I would expect you not to do that. Mm -hmm. To respond just that's by default. Respect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, y'all still wanna talk about and harp about this, like Let's talk about what Star Jones is at now. Let's talk about what I'm doing. And, and I would have been shady too, Star Jones. And they got you back too when they were showing them old clips. Yeah, yeah. Pop. But you look, she was Star was beautiful. She was a beautiful, was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, I think what, it, what, the, all, what the whole thing was that boiled down to that I think Barbara really wanted to get out of the way. Yes, you heard Barbara tell the side of the story. You heard Star tell the side of the story. But you never heard them tell it together. Mm -hmm. Because remember, at one point, Barbara, when she was on Oprah, she told her side of the story. And then Star was telling her side of the story. And saying, well, I don't, you know, this, that, and the third. So to have them sit next to each other mm -hmm. and say, look. You say what, and I'm going to tell you if I agree with that part. And I think that was the whole purpose of Barbara wanting to get that out of the way. So it would be no confusion about what was really said. Because you know it's always your side, my side, and the, the truth. truth. And I think even though we were a little tired of hearing about it, I think Barbara Walters did what anybody in her position would have did. Like, look, you did go around saying that we, so I need to just set the record straight of what really happened. You know? Because I think that if I left this show on bad terms and I went to different outlets and said well this is what really happened and you said this is not nah, this is what happened then eventually I decided to come back I'm sure you would want to clear the air once and for all like look right I, I would think it's oh because we both said our side yeah but 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 at but one you point know what? I would have weren't agreeing on what was being said I would have started by saying I would have said like you know I know you probably don't want to but you're going to talk about the past you haven't been here in six years and I would like to tell everyone why we haven't had you on for six years. I think that would have been the right way to start it. But Barbara Walters, I swear, she has that nose, like her nose is like all the way up here. And she downs talk people a lot. I don't know if people notice, but Barbara Walters is a shady bitch. Like she really, really is. And you know, she down talk star, even Joy. Like was trying to throw that subtle shade. Like you gotta know how to detect shade. Why is she down talking her? Like Joy? No, Bar Barbara, Barbara. She kept talking about what happened six years ago. But that's not down she, talking. That it. Like come on. Like we we talking about this already. We already know what happened. This is going on. You, you you still talking about it? Then you're talking about the weight loss and why you know. We told you before, you know, we talked, we had private talks about it. Like, you didn't have to say that. What we didn't have to say, well, I knew you, your weight was, was, something was wrong when you walked up the steps and I told you, don't come back until you see a doctor. Like, you didn't have to say. No, 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 but, 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 because I'm going to come to their defense. But, sometimes you have people, like Star said. Star said herself that she used to go in there and think that she was she used to tell people, oh, how beautiful she looked and how. But she said that that was a lie. Yeah. She knew that was a lie. But, she's but see, Whoopi Goldberg, mm -hmm. as a friend to Star Jones, was telling her, look, don't do that because sometimes you need somebody to give you that tough love. You said this before. You need somebody to give you that tough love. Just like what happened with Whitney Houston and her mother. Her mother, time and time again, told her, Stop doing this, stop doing this. And then what did she do that last time? Came to her house with two police officers. If you ain't gonna do it my way, you're gonna do it their way. You need that tough love. And what we was telling her, look, you are slowly killing yourself. You may go around telling people, oh, you beautiful and stuff, but me and you, we both know the truth. And if I'm your friend, I should be able to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't come to my house until you get that in order. Because I don't want, I don't want the next time I see you, I'm at your funeral somewhere. So I don't think that was something wrong because Star said herself, look, I agree with you. And that was one of the reasons prompted her to start getting her stuff in order. Well, I, did, I just didn't like that they kept talking about like, well, that was I, did, I did have a friend that told, I mean, told me. But Star was there. Bitch, but Star was there on the mm -hmm. show to talk about her weight mm -hmm. and to talk about the whole women's heart uh, stuff. Yeah, but I just think they was going. They were just trying to dig in a little bit too much. I don't think so. I think that they they were genuinely concerned about her. And see, when Star Jones was on the View, Star Jones had this facade up that. Yes, I know I'm big, and yes, I know I'm unhealthy, but you know what? I feel beautiful, and I look beautiful. And as long as I feel beautiful and look beautiful, you better not tell me otherwise. Even though she knew everybody else felt a totally different way. But her whole thing was, 
You better not tell me otherwise, because if you do, like Joy said, have we said something to you about your weight, you would have snapped at us. Mm -hmm. Because that's the type of attitude start, and she looks like the type that had that attitude. Bitch, I that's the type of attitude that she had. But see, that's the type of attitude somebody has when they don't want to hear the truth. But that's the type, no, ain't no well. That's the type of attitude listen, you listen, have when you listen, don't want to hear the listen. truth. When you feel good about yourself, I, we gonna talk about me now. But starting when you feel good about herself, and she said it. Well, I know I feel good about myself, right? But you're not, you're not obese. No, well, technically, medically, yeah. How much but do you I'm, I'm, girl, I don't, I don't want to say. Uh, but <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll tell you. No, I'll tell, no, I'll tell you right now. Okay, okay, listen. So I was, I went to dinner. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him out there. I went to lunch actually with Dennis, and we was talking. And he was like, um. You know, I was going through a lot of your old videos, and when I'm going through a lot of your videos, you were a whole lot smaller than what you was, and you really need to get it together. You know I was ready to smack. But you know, can I just say, can I just say this real quick? Can I just say this to you real yes. quick? I was going through my phone yesterday because I'm getting ready to get a new iPhone. Mm -hmm. And for some apparent reason, whenever I hook up my phone to my computer, my pictures don't save and I don't know how to save them. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all this extra stuff and I'm going to get rid of the pictures that I don't need. And we'll say, and I came across these pictures of when we were in LA the first time in October 2010. And I had pictures in my phone when I took with you at the Janet Jackson store. Mm -hmm. And you were tremendously small. And I said to myself, sitting at my desk, no shade, but Kevin needs to get back to this size because you were so small. And I think that sometimes when your friends tell you something like that, I'm talking about Dennis. If Dennis is telling you something like that, I think that even though you may, you know, you may feel some type of way, but I think that deep down inside, as a friend, you should be so happy yeah, that you have somebody you know. who is that openly concerned about your health because you got some people around you that won't say a word to you. They'll sit there and let you get big and big and big and big and big and won't say nothing. And then when something happens to you, well, see, I knew he should have, but you as his friend, you didn't say nothing to him when it was going on. So I applaud Dennis for saying something because he's concerned. Yeah, I was happy, but then again, I was like, bitch, I don't need you to, it's, it's kind of like when you know something, you're like, bitch, I don't need you, don't you hear to it. tell me. And like, that's what whole star. If we would have told you this, you would have snapped at uh, us. You know, so, so sometimes you need somebody to see this one. Well, I mean, I'm getting a new one anyway. Sometimes you need somebody to tell you that. And I think that I don't I don't find what Whoopi said to start to yeah. be a little offensive. But let's, you know, well, let's just that. say, let's say when I quit my job, <laughs> In May, I was 215, and then now I'm 235. Because now you're not moving around. Mm -mm. But that's, I don't know, all right, huh. It's tough. People don't understand. No, it, is, it is tough. It is. It's tough. Like when you, <laughs> it's, uh, trust it's, me, I know. Look, because when I met tough. you, let me tell you something. When I started doing the Scorpion show, I was 155 pounds. Three days ago, I weighed myself, and I am now 182. I was a good... I, you know, most people say, oh, well, that's not bad. You're 182. But going from 155 to 182, and you can see the physical change, I don't like that change. But I you know what? <laughs> they say when you when you get, when you're eating good and you're... You're getting good money and stuff. That's what happened. Oh, is that? Oh, is that what it is? Good money. Oh, okay. You're getting good money. Oh, oh, good money. Oh, wow. You're eating good. You're looking good. You know, that's what happened. Well, I guess all the good money's going to you. Lies. Such a good so, money. So, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good. Did you remember he just said good money? So, who you talking to? Huh? Because she can't believe it. No, Bernadette. You can't I'm believe it. I can't believe it either. Yeah. Good money. I'm gonna write that down. Good money. Good money. No, but no. Let me tell you when that good money show up. Whatever. That good money. They're traveling everywhere. He got out of. You know. Kevin be doing what he want to. I need to stop that. I need to just do like maybe two, three trips a year. I'm trying to get to London too. No, what you need to do is stop I need to talking exercise. about it. I know, it's it. hard. No, let me tell y'all what y'all understand. When you start working out, like, you be like, bitch, oh my God, I got to do this. And then when you look at where you at, and then when you look at the goal, it seems long. It but in reality, it's not like 
Two months ago, it was just Christmas. Mm -hmm. Next week is March 1st. It's not hard. It's just that I have to get it's that out my thing. mind that is so far away. Like, Sizzle is three months. I'm like, yes, I can't wait for Sizzle. But then, bitch, and I get in that mirror, I'd be like, girl, you can walk the beach like that. But then you yeah. said a few weeks ago that you don't care. You, you but I know, that. but now it's like, it's too big. It's like, Well, see, you know what you need big. to do? You know what the it's first hard. step is? Because you know my first step for me, because I was procrastinating and I had to get that gym membership. And I got the gym membership and I don't And know. I went to the gym and Sorry. I haven't been, I think, in a week, which is not good, but I am going in the next few days because mm -hmm. I was just so, you know, I didn't have really good sleep. So, you know, I was like, I can't go to the gym and be tired and stuff. Excuse me. But the thing is, I think with you, the first thing you have to do is stop what you're doing and get up out of this room. Because you can't lose weight in this room. You have to get out and about. First of all, we've had these really, really nice days for these past few days. And that is a perfect opportunity for you to go out and just, you know. You may not want to do this, but you, if you're going to go downtown, you need to walk downtown. And That's not bad to walk downtown. Well, no, but you don't do it. You say it's not bad, but you don't do it. If you're gonna go downtown and shop, you need to walk downtown and then catch the bus back home, or, or either way you want to do it. But you should the first you should not catch the bus there and back, especially if you're trying to get that weight off. Cause that let me tell you something. Do you know where Ethan Jefferson is? Mm-hmm. In Northfield and Jefferson, Ethan Jefferson. Eleven years ago in May of 2001, I walked from Ethan Jefferson all the way to my house. I see now. I did that. that. I did that. I walked from there. Oh, will I ever do it again? No. But then again, if I don't want this weight to keep grabbing, maybe I will have to do it one day. But you know, I I recently said to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go downtown and I'm going to do what I need to do downtown. And I'm going to just turn on my iPod and walk from Center, Center City all the way back to my house. And let me tell you where I got from. Center City to Gerard Ave. <laughs> okay? But I made an effort and an attempt to do it. See, that's the first step. You got to let that initiative that, that to like do it. That hours to get home. It probably would, but I, I, it was on the weekend. I don't have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing to do. And that's what I'm saying. You like to go downtown and shop. So why not walk down there one day, especially when the weather's getting nice, and just catch the bus back home once you finish shopping? I need to get in that gym. You need to get out of this room. I'm just saying, you need to get out of this room, because this room is not going to help you lose weight. You know, that tough love. Here comes that tough love. And you need to give Dennis a hug the next time you see him, cause you know. Dennis already know how I fuck about that. Okay. We all, we all, we give all give each other. Nah. Give him a hug. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. I will give him a hug. Cause if I oh, give him a hug, hug, then everyone's gonna think that we together. <laughs> Twitter see, went but off. Like, but see, y'all didn't see what it was like before that red light came on. But I'm not going. You. <laughs> you fucking tried. Excuse me, cause I said I was gonna stop cursing. But you <laughs> tried it. <laughs> You see, I'm trying to burn it down. <laughs> you try, dude. Don't do it. So, or after the red light. So anyway, Don't do it, because ain't nothing happened before or after. <laughs> you tried it. So, you know what, I'm Viv. You know, I was going to give you a little shine. But I just think you just so bitter, you had to come at Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams loved Whitney Houston. If Wendy Williams did not love Whitney Houston, she would not cry before her death, and she would not be crying after her death. When you don't, what, I don't think what people understand is that some people get so captivated in these celebrities that they see themselves in them. And that's what Wendy saw in Whitney Houston. And Wendy always seen that change was going to come for Whitney. And, you know, we didn't get to see that. We didn't get to see Whitney say, I'm clean and, and I'm doing this or I'm mentoring new singers and I'm doing that. I think that's what Wendy said. I don't think Wendy cared about her getting on Whitney. I don't think nobody did because Wendy was one of the main people getting on Whitney when people were supposed to. A lot, I think a lot of people ignored what was going on with Whitney and never talked about it. But Wendy was one of those people that wanted Whitney to get help. Go ahead. I, I would have to disagree with you to a point because even though I think that Wendy Williams wanted Whitney to get help, mm -hmm. I think Wendy Williams and her whole attempt to try to help Wendy went about it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Because for years, Wendy Williams down-talked Whitney. She didn't just say Whitney needs to get help, but she down-talked her and she said a lot of nasty things about Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown as a couple. She, there's, there is 
a good way of censoring and then a not so good way of censoring. Yeah, man. Wendy Williams got on TV and or the, and her radio show and would just really belittle Whitney Houston to so, to the point where sometimes it didn't even sound like it was genuine. It just sounded like she was just saying it just to start some type of beef between them so she could have more shine for herself. I think that Aunt Viv made a really good point. You get on TV one day and you you pour out your heart and you cry about her, but yet just a few months ago, probably not even a few months ago, a few weeks ago, you would just talk down talk to her. And then after that, the following week, you get on TV and start saying all this negative stuff about Janet Jackson. It's like if Janet Jackson dies, are you then going to start crying in your show and say, oh, you know, Janet But no, but her? see, I, you know, I, I, I'm not that you know, different. You know what I understand? Is why is it that people are saying that what is Aunt Viv being bitter about Fresh Prince of Bel Air has anything to do with her calling Wendy out on her shit? That has nothing to do with that. Those two have nothing to do with each other. I think she's a little bitter. Yeah, she's a bit, she's still she, bitter. She is bitter about the whole Fresh Prince of Bel Air situation. Yes, she is. But what does that have to do with her calling Wendy Williams out on her constantly over the years? Just like what she did. What was that rapper Red Man or whatever the case may be when Wendy Williams got on? Yeah, that was that was you terrible. Know, the Wendy was Williams. Terrible. Wendy Williams has made a name for herself. To me, I just don't see anything. It's it's hard for me to see the positive in Wendy Williams because she has been so negative throughout the years. And she that's how she's made a name for herself. There's no way you can say, oh, Wendy Williams made her a name for herself about being positive. Right, you, know. you just can't. You can't say that. So I think Aunt Viv had a good she was, point. She was doing her job. That's that's what she had to do to say on the radio. No, 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 no. This is no. what they do to keep a popular radio show. No, that's show. not true. That's not true. We heard talk about people. Well, okay, all Howard there. Stern, but Howard Stern and Wendy Williams. But not everybody on the radio does that. Now you may give your opinions about a celebrity and what they do. Fine. But Wendy Williams used to bash these people to used the point to. where I think Wendy came a long way. Well, yeah, because she's on TV now and she wants them on her show. Of course. Yeah, of course. Do you, I, me and you bash people all the time. I mean, of course we don't do it in a way where Wendy Williams does it. I mean, we bash Rihanna all the time. But I'm sure we got on TV. I'm sure the executives told you not. We want Rihanna on the show. So y'all gonna have to tone it down a little bit in order for y'all to get her on the show. Of course Wendy Williams toned it down because she wants these big stars on the show. Her first season, you would have never thought that you would see as many A-listers on her show in the first season that you do now. I think Aunt Viv made a really good point. Like Wendy Williams, if you want to be this positive role model like you supposedly were or you claim that you were for Wendy Williams, then you need to start reevaluating your own self. You need to start looking in the mirror. Because there's nothing, like I said, there's nothing positive about Wendy Williams that I can point out. Nothing at all. Because she doesn't say anything positive. She sprues, she, she, she gossips. She just gossips. And she's always gossiping about the negative. She never talks about the positive. It's always negative. 90% of her show when she's talking about her top topics are all negative. They're all negative. So, I mean, yes, she may have been genuinely upset when Whitney Houston died, but when when did you really hear her say anything positive about Whitney Houston? Okay. You, you, you didn't. If anything, she was saying all this negative stuff. Okay, fine. You know what, Wendy? I applaud you for being a recovering drug addict, and I applaud you for cover, calling these drug addicts out because you want them to know, look, there is a better life. Fine. I applaud you for doing that. But you know what, Wendy? You can all you want to. That don't mean somebody's going to come and open that door for you, does it? No. You have to go about it a totally different way. And I think that Wendy went about it, about calling Whitney Houston out. I think Wendy could have, Wendy could have, her and Whitney's relationship could have been so much better had Wendy personally called Whitney Houston out and said, you know what, I want to have a lunch with you. I want to have a dinner date with you. And the two of them got together and talked about this in a personal way. But Wendy Williams just publicly, you know, this... Oh, well, she's I don't it. think we will ever. I don't, if y'all ever think y'all want to see the nice side of Wendy, no, you're not going to see the white nice side. Of your minds will forget. Let it. me say something. Wendy Williams has been doing this forever. She's been doing this for over what, 25 years. Wendy Williams is never going to change. I'm been writing this letter. It was now, like, girl, you should have did this when she first came on TV. Now you coming at everybody because you're mad. I, I understand what you said and everything. I do think that. Wendy was a genuine fan of Whitney. I didn't say that she wasn't. I'm yes, sure she, she went was. there sometimes, but I think she was giving Whitney that tough love that nobody else 
was giving her. But that that interview they did, now that was just pure hilarity to me. No, but she was, it was nothing but serious. She was being very shady it was just pure hilarity. Hilarity. When you listen to that interview and you listen to what Whitney what Wendy Williams is saying to Whitney Houston, she's being damn right disrespectful. And she and of that course, was one of the reasons course. why Whitney called her to look. You're going a little bit too far. And she was going too far. Mm -hmm. Even with Whitney the on the phone, she was going too far. And, and to, to, to say about Aunt Viv's letter and why she's doing it now. She's doing it now because now you have Whitney Houston who's just passed. And everybody knows that Wendy Williams, Whitney Houston was one of Wendy, Houston, Wendy Williams' top targets when she was alive. When I read Aunt Viv's letter, I said to my, after, after the end of the letter, I said to myself, Aunt Viv, this letter is really not going to go anywhere because Wendy Williams is not going to change. But I understood the message that yeah. Aunt Viv was giving in the letter. I still don't see how y'all think that because Aunt Viv is bitter about what happened to First Prince, that that somehow associates with this letter to Wendy Williams. Because this letter to Wendy Williams has nothing to do about her. It's about Wendy Williams being more positive to these celebrities that she talks about. Because like she said, Wendy, look, come on, if y'all, let me tell you something. I don't, I don't, they can write, they, anybody, Beyonce can write Wendy Williams a letter. It's never going to change Wendy Williams. This is why people watch her show. This is why she's renewed until 2014. People watch her to know what's the gossip. People don't watch her to say, oh, well, who donated $25,000 to charity? Or who has a, a gala going on where they're supporting children in Africa? Nobody's watching Wendy Williams to hear that. We want to watch Wendy because we want to know what's going on with that gossip. With the Scorpion show. Well, well let me just, they want to know what's going well, on with that gossip. To correct you, I don't watch Wendy Williams. Yeah, I may watch from no, time no, no, to no, time. No, 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 no. Wendy Williams comes on Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I work Monday through but Friday. But you got the internet. If I am not, if, no, no, no. If I am not at work, and Wendy Williams, I may watch her show every so often, but I don't sit there and have a ritual. I don't go home and click on a whistle name. Mm -hmm. If Wendy Williams is interviewing somebody that I want to see her interview, then I'll watch the interview part. I do not get my kicks off of Wendy Williams' hot topics. That's why I go to The View. Not to Wendy Williams. Because in her high topic, Wendy, there's nothing about I think that Wendy gets too mad when people, the audience don't agree with her. That's my only thing about the hot topic. And she tries to push her opinion off. But otherwise, yeah, she does try to push her opinion off. And she tries to push her negative opinion off. That's the part that I don't like. Yeah, because you like, know I didn't she like, don't give you a balanced look, view of things. She just gives you the negative point of it. People only really get mad at Wendy Williams when she goes off for the people that they stand for. Because, bitch, I was ready to come through that TV and choke up when she was talking about Janet. Well, that's not true because... But otherwise, that's, that's not true. Yeah. That's not, but that's not true for me because for a very long time I've always said that I didn't particularly care for um, Wendy Williams. It didn't have anything to do with Beyonce. It's just how she treats celebrities in general. But she's I'm saying, of, you know, you don't even know people getting mad Wendy Williams now unless she, like when she went off on Sierra. Oh girl, you need to get off that basketball court. Oh no, what she said, Sierra could be in the basketball court. Sierra could just give it up. Only Sierra man, fans <laughs> were mad. People only get mad when it's the people that they stand for. About Wendy Williams. Otherwise, it's just Wendy Williams. But hey, Wendy, you do you. I can't tell you how to run your show because you can't tell me how to run mine. <laughs> Anything else is just a motherfucking opinion. Just yeah. like Janet Hubis. It's just an opinion. Yeah. We might not all agree. We might say that she's bitter. We might say it's the truth. Some some of it was the truth. Some of it was. A lot like, of it was the truth. A lot of it. You was know, the truth. I didn't. A lot of it was the truth. She. She. It was the truth. It was the truth. Wendy Williams, you. You did this for so many years, and then you know, if anybody didn't know, you know, if anybody didn't know if that Wendy Williams loved Whitney Houston, they would think that she was being fake. Like a lot of people said that when that clip came out of her crying, a lot of people was like, "This is not real," because she bashed this yeah, woman for about these girls twenty think, years. These girls think I don't like Beyonce. Well, yeah. Like well, see. And that's another thing. Isn't that, isn't that what they say? It's what you put out there. That's why so many people don't didn't believe Wendy Williams and her and her crying because a lot of people watched it and said, if you go to the YBF and pull up that clip, you'll see so many comments saying this 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 is not genuine because throughout the years she just publicly bashed Whitney Houston. She publicly bashed her, and so. You know, with the whole Beyonce thing with you, people hear you. They hear, even though you speak positive, they hear more the negative stuff that you're saying. That's what they want, and so, want to. And well, I mean, but I mean, let's be honest. You said more negative than positive. Let's keep it real. Because I think more you, back in the day, 
Cause you well, know, yeah, that's true because you haven't you kind of toned it down a whole lot. Yeah, you toned it down a whole lot. But I mean, when we first started out, your thing on this show was bash Beyonce. Bash and your thing was Beyonce. Beyonce, 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 Beyonce,
Excuse me. Ooh, that was that's amazing. I gotta fart. Oh no! <laughs> Ew. 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 Bitch, let me get out of this fucking room.